Hey guys, this is Doc Skeleton, and today we're going to be continuing the Open Office tutorial series. We're going to be focusing on tables today, which are very important when you're doing schoolwork or reports for any kind of professional stuff. Because what tables allow you to do is display your data in a very nice and clean way that other people can easily read. People like seeing pie charts, people like seeing tables, they don't like seeing walls of unformatted text. So the easiest way to create a table is to go up here to the main menu, look for the table tab, go to insert, and then table. Alternatively, you can do a key combination by hitting control and F12 at the same time on your keyboard to bring up this window. The insert table window um, allows you to set the number of columns or rows for the table that you're about to insert. Let's go ahead and do three for both. And the most useful option down here is probably auto format. If you are in kind of a hurry and you don't want to change the appearance of each cell individually or you just want a pre-made uh, color scheme for your table to make it look nicer and cleaner, then you can use the auto format to do that. So down here you can see that there's a whole bunch of options, different color schemes, different uh, border lines that you can assign to the table at once. The only thing to keep in mind is that if later you do try to add your own border lines to the table, it's possible that you'll get some conflict between the auto format borders and the ones you created yourself. So we'll go ahead and choose this black 2 template just so you can see how it works. Now of course it doesn't look spectacular because we haven't written anything in the rows so we'll go ahead and uh, add some rows in. We'll do a month for the left side rows and then we'll do temperature and rainfall I guess. Rainfall. Alright, and let's add some data in. In January, it's probably 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 40F, and that's 10 inches of rain, let's say. Then in February, by the way, to type in the uh, inside the cells, you just have to left click inside, or you can hit tab to go from left to right and top to bottom, moving between each cell quickly. Also, you can do that in reverse by doing shift tab. Uh, very handy if you are trying to type in a lot of data. So in February, let's say it warms up a little bit and get some more rainfall. Now with this table, we're going to want to create some kind of total here, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, uh, because a lot of tables do sum things up in some kind of quantity, like number of parts sold, uh, average temperature, that kind of thing. But we don't have enough space to add a total row in, in right now, so what we're going to do is select the table and hit the insert rows button over here in the table toolbar. So now we have added in a new row and we'll make this the total. For some reason we're going to <laughs> combine, no, 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 that's ridiculous. We'll do an average, so 42.5F is one way we could do it. Alternatively, what we can do is go over here on the toolbar to the sum icon and then select the two uh, the two cells that we want to combine or sum into one number and then since we want to get an average we want to divide that by the number of cells which in this case is two hit OK and then uh oh we see that we get a zero instead of an average between those two numbers and the reason for that is although there are numbers in those cells it's not uh, open office writer is not actually interpreting them as numbers so what we can do to fix that is to remove the letters from it and then say make a note up here that the temperature is in Fahrenheit and then now it's taking the 40, the 45, adding them together and dividing them by 2. And what's awesome about these formulas that you can write inside of OpenOffice Writer tables or inside of OpenOffice Calc, which is the equivalent of Excel, is that if you change the numbers the result instantly changes too. Very awesome. If you have a table where you want to combine the cells into fewer cells using a very precise method, then what you can use is the merge cells key. Of course, it's grayed out until you select the cells that you want to combine. You can do this by uh, left clicking with the mouse and dragging over the cells you want, or you can select an entire row, the entire table, uh, however you want to do it. And then all you have to do is hit merge cells. As you can see, all the data has been combined into one cell with the click of a button. 
And you can also do the same thing in reverse by hitting the split cells key. Now it was four originally, so we'll split it into four. We want it equal proportions and horizontally, I believe. Uh, no, it was vertically that we wanted it. Yeah, not two, but four. There we go. Now, as you can see, the data doesn't immediately return to its original cells, but it's not too hard to do it manually if you only have a few elements that you're working with. Of course, it's always better to plan from the start so that you don't get into a mess. Now let's, for the sake of argument, say that unfortunately, we put in the effort to create a table and we no longer want it. It's a shame, but we want to get rid of it and you can't just go and select the table and hit delete. That'll delete the data inside of it. If you actually want to delete the table itself, what you have to do is select all the data. You can do this in the main menu or the easier way, in my opinion is to just go over here and hit either delete columns, which will delete all the currently selected columns, or delete rows. If you have the entire table selected, it's just gonna delete everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Bam, that ugly table is gone and we only have the nicely formatted uh, table up top for rain temperature, uh, rain and temperature. Now lastly, if you want to edit table options, there's a couple ways to do it. One, of course, is to select your table and go ahead and click Table Properties. But another way is to have part of your table selected. And, or you don't even have to have it selected, but you can right-click on a table and click the Table menu option, which will bring you up to the Table Format window. And from here, you have a series of options. First tab, you can set the name, choose the alignment for your words inside of the cells, the spacing for the table between your content. Uh, if you add an inch above, what it will do, I'll just demonstrate, is to put one inch of empty padding space between your table and everything above. So if we were to, yeah, there we go. So no matter what I type, the table will always be one inch from the content. Also, we have the text flow tab. Also, we have the text flow tab, which allows you to add extra control over the format of your text inside of the table cells. Uh, if you want to make it work more like a normal t paragraph or break at certain points, these options let you do that. Uh, vertical alignment, if you have text inside of a cell, uh, the alignment is going to determine where it initially ends up. So if you have like four spaces in a cell and you vertically align the text, you've just typed it in, it's going to appear at the top if it says vertical alignment top. And vice versa, of course. Columns, where you can set the column width of each column individually and down to absolute precision. This is easier than left clicking on the border between columns or rows and dragging them to where you want them. Uh, not necessarily easier, but it will give you uh, absolutely precise number, which is sometimes what you want. The borders tab allows you to take the currently selected table or rows or columns or just individual cells and add a border onto them. Uh, there are other ways to do this, but this is the most full featured uh, area for that, where you can set the line thickness, the type of line, the color of the borders, and which side of the cell or cells that you want a border to appear on. Lastly, of course, we have background color. Uh, this will also apply to the currently selected cells or the entire table, if you have the entire table collected, uh, selected. And all you have to do is choose a color, apply it, and suitably, <laughs> that cell now looks a little bit ridiculous. Actually, it's not too bad. Now here's a couple more things you can access without even messing with the table toolbar. If you want to change the width of a row or a column, the easiest way, as I was talking a little bit about earlier, is to left click between the columns and drag them. This can be very, very nice. Uh, more of a quick fix than 
a finished deal. But it does allow you to quickly adjust between sizes. For instance, you can make the uh, header have a little bit more height to kind of emphasize the fact that it's an important row inside instead of just a regular one. And let's say that you have uh, numbers that you want to be formatted in a certain way as an alternative to, say, having temperature and then parentheses F at the top to represent that it is te um, a temperature column. We can select a cell, right click it, go to number format, and then there's a whole series of different uh, number functions we can run the data through. Doesn't quite look like there's one for temperature, but let's say we were using currency. That's a pretty common one. Uh, we can have it formatted by the default currency, US dollars, hit OK, and then bam. Although the raw data is just 45, it's now been formatted into US dollars by adding in the extra decimal places and throwing in the dollar sign. That can be pretty useful, uh, a time saver, and also is important if you want to be able to display data and also be able to run the formula functions. Because remember, um, the cells have to be containing pure number data in order for you to do math on them. They can't read uh, symbols by themselves naturally. So the raw data needs to be numbers so that you can do number operations. Then after that, it gets converted into the dollar sign version. Now you'll notice that when I dragged the borders of the columns over to the left to kind of shrink the column sizes, uh, that it still doesn't look perfect. And also we have this right border over here for the table that is just expending, uh, extending the right-hand column far more than it needs to. So an easy way that we can fix this is to select the entire table and go over here to the table toolbar where we have an optimize option. Using this and selecting optimal column width will shrink the width of the column so that it only takes up space on the page that's actually necessary. You can do the same thing for row height and also in this menu are distributing the columns evenly so that each column has exactly the same size. You can also do that for rows. But what we want here is optimal column width. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you'll see the entire table has been shrunk into this nice little area. It still looks good and it takes up a lot less room on the page. So that covers most of the basic table functionality inside of OpenOffice Writer. If you were looking for more advanced table manipulation, especially when it comes to data and formulas, uh, the software that you really want to be using is Open Writer, or OpenOffice Calc which is the Microsoft Excel equivalent, works with huge spreadsheets, can connect to databases, and pull in lots of data in order to do uh, data manipulation and formulas and all that other good stuff. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you want to see more open office content, then feel free to subscribe. Let me know that you like it. Uh, let me know when I'm doing good, doing bad, etc. And I'll see you all next time. I've been Dark Skeleton.